Welcome, everybody. How you doing? John Suntress here for Comics Arts Live. And uh, this is a very special panel that we've put together. And uh, everybody's popping in. I'll uh, go down the rundown of who's here. We're all uh, paying tribute today to uh, the great John Paul Leone, who we lost uh, tragically too early uh, at the age of 49 uh, this month. So with us uh, to my right, uh, as I'm seeing the screens, I see Charlie Adler right there. I see Mark Hay. Uh, Jock is with us. Tom King, Bill Reinhold, Lieber Mayho, and Declan Shelby. Welcome, everybody. Hello. Thank you. Hey. Hello. Hello. This is great because Hello everybody. Everyone, yeah, it's it's great yeah. to see everyone. And we've got, uh, you know, people that have collaborated with John Paul, but also uh, his peers. And uh, maybe in, in some cases, too, I would imagine, even for the group, whether you were older or younger than John Paul, uh, likely an inspiration and then maybe influence on your own art. So, uh you know, I, I uh, the only thing I could say very briefly is that what I love about uh, John Paul was, of course, a wonderful person. And um, my favorite memory of him beyond our talks at conventions was uh, Baltimore about 2009. Uh, Walt Simonson came over to Brian Bendis' table and I was sitting with Brian and he was all excited. And he had pages of John Paul's stuff that he had drawn for his vigilante run that he had co-written with uh, Marv Wolfman. And it was just so great to see the excitement in Walt. And he's like, you got to see these pages. They're amazing. And he's just like rifling through them and stuff. And we were thrilled. And we're like so thrilled that Walter wanted our opinion. But also, you know, afterwards, Brian turns to me. He's like, isn't it great? Walt is getting excited about one of his students, former students' work. <laughs> it was pretty cool. So that's that's probably my favorite John Paul uh, memory. So, that's yeah. Right. You know, uh, Bill, you uh, – should have done you know, you should have clapped him down and made sure the student didn't do any, didn't do well. <laughs> Pretty cool, man. Bill, you worked with uh, you worked with John on uh, on Earth X, of course. And uh, yeah, just, right. you know, t tell us tell us uh, tell us about uh, you know, how you guys were put together and the experience. Sure. Um, back in '96, I was uh, working at DC Comics, inking. Uh, Ron Wagner on the Book of Fate. At the same time, John was drawing Challenges of the Unknown that Sean Martinborough was inking. And um, for one reason or another, Sean left, and uh, we had the same editor, and they asked if I'd come on and work on that book also. Uh, in fact, before we even did that, uh, there was uh, this little promo Thing that DC sent out for the two books, Book of Fate and for uh, Challenges of the Unknown. And they had me ink it. And that was the first time I had really seen his pencils or anything like that. And that's when we first talked. And so that was our introduction to working with each other. And then it was after that that Sean left and I came in doing the, doing the book. And so as I'm working with him for a number of issues... I was at that time living near Alex Ross. I lived in Evanston, Illinois. He lived in Wilmette. Hmm. And I was always going to his house and showing him my work and vice versa. And so I was bringing this stuff over, of John Paul's. Uh, I don't know that he'd seen the work. I, I think maybe not, but I'm not positive. So he really liked it. And he said in the past, Alex has said in the past that if he was, if he did pencil, it would have been something like that, that kind of work in the style wise. And um, so uh, when Earth X was created, Alex had, uh, we'd gone out to lunch and he started laying out what Earth X is. And my eyes were rolling in the back of my head because I couldn't even take it all in. But he basically said, I want you or John and you to, to do the book. And, uh, and I said, sure. And um, we were both at that, by that time we were off doing other things anyways. Um, and so that's how it started. So um, that's when we became, uh, uh, you know, working on earth X for next, you know, couple of years or so. That's awesome. Yeah. That's some of John's uh, pencils, early pencils on the book. And, and yet, uh, as he, yeah. yeah. Go on. Uh, anyway, so, uh, yeah, so, uh, I, you know, my time of knowing John really was, you know, for an intense period of those, like, few years from, like, 96 to 2000. 
getting to know each other. And um, I've, I've explained this sort of to people, sort of like people in Hollywood who do a movie and they're on a project and they get to know each other, they see each other every day, they're best friends. And then the project's over and they go separate ways. And then maybe they see each other once in a great while and it's like they've known each other forever, but they're not necessarily in touch. It's kind of like that with me and John. I would, you know, once in a while uh, talk to him uh, online or something like that, but really we weren't in touch uh, much at all through the years. And, uh, but it was a big part of my life uh, at that time and had a big impact on me, both as an artist and, uh, uh, and my career. Understood. No, I can appreciate yeah. that. Definitely. Um, and Tom, uh, you know, really, uh, you obviously have been in a recent collaboration with John working on the uh, Batman Catwoman uh, annual. And uh, yeah, tell, and also, of course, I mean, your, your history goes back to when he was doing covers for you on uh, Sheriff of Babylon, too. Yeah, uh, uh, John, I, hate, I should say up front, I, I worked with him on three projects, which I love, um, uh, Black Death in America, Sheriff of Babylon, and, and Batcat. And I, I never talked to the guy. Like, I, I can just, I'm, I'm more of a fan than, than a friend. I, I just don't want to claim Same. that I knew him somewhere. Like, same, same here. I feel like a bit of a fraud here. Yeah, he, he, he was su he was such a professional's professional. Like literally, like he, he'd he, you know I, I sent him a script. He'd, he'd be like, "Cool script." He'd send an art. I'd be like, "Perfect art." And that was like how we communicated. There was no notes. There was no that. There was there was nothing. I, I remember I met him for the first time at uh, New York Comic Con. I don't know, 2014 or something. And I, you know, I'd obviously known his work, but his name was Jean Paul Leon. He drew this very European, beautiful style. I, I, I was shocked he didn't have an accent. Like I didn't like that. He wasn't like pretentious. <laughs> he was like this, you know, down there earth Texas kid, you know, like it didn't, it was very, so like, I can't, I can't claim, I can just claim what it's talk about what it was like to work with him and just, um, and the approach to his art. And, and I could, um, I don't know, t tell some stories about, I mean, like th this dude was so casual. We, um, so uh, 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 Black Death in America, the first thing we did together, uh, it got nominated for an Eisner. It was my first Eisner. Um, I remember I was so excited because the year before I had watched Lee, who's on this panel, go to the Eisners, and I'd been so fucking jealous. Uh, and so I was like, oh, now I'm gonna do it. And, uh, and I went and we lost and I was, Stupid, and I like walked out because I was so upset because I was young and stupid. And I like text him like, "We lost. These motherfuckers don't understand anything." You know, and he's just like, "Oh, bummer." That was that was it. It was like like he was he was just you know I got another I got another deadline. He didn't give another another thought. He was a man of at least in in like artistic interaction. There wasn't much artistic interaction. He just got the job done and did it fantastically beautifully. Um, so I mean, as as a writer, as a guy who doesn't know art, I always thought he was cheating. So I was when I first met him, I was amazed to see his original art looked exactly like the art he was sent in because I assumed he was doing all sorts of Photoshop stuff. Um, and so that was always my revelation with him was that like this was actually coming out of his pen and pencil. Um, and I, you know, I, I bought a sheriff cover, which I still have on my wall. I mean, he was just a, a genius. And uh, and he was work, yeah, working till his last day. And um, uh, <laughs> in your, it gets in your throat, right? Uh, in, in, you know, he was in the hospital. Um, uh, still emailing us about back cat deadlines. He was he was honest. He was he was saying, you know, I don't think I'm gonna make this deadline. He, he, he was like feeling guilty. We're like, you're in the fucking hospital, dude. Relax, you know. Just yeah. um, and the pages he was turning, which I'm sure will eventually, you know, we're gonna turn back cat into a whole big uh, John Paulian tribute. But awesome. they were still beautiful. They were still beautiful. Um, so yeah, that's amazing. And uh, you know, guys, pl please, as artists, speak to this as uh, Tom said, the fact that. Uh, John Paul's art was so realistic looking and he really almost had this kind of documentarian style. That's what it felt like to me. And even reading art uh, interviews with him, uh, he seemed to gravitate more to the realism of the subject, even with superheroes. And I mean, in, in the best way really made you kind of believe the images that he was creating. So yeah, but jump ball. Anyone I, I, talk about I would say in a way that's, I mean, that's very true, but like, his technique was so, like, guttural. Like, like you know, it's not ridiculously refined. You know, there's thick, blocky lines, and then there's kind of very light swashes. Like, whatever, whatever would maybe deaden work that's maybe might be photo referenced. 
he to me and I'm again speaking as a fan you know um I just felt like the way he inked his work just removed any of that kind of staleness and it always felt like yeah like a piece like that he knows how to draw a jacket but the way he chooses to kind of render it I think is always um makes the work far more I don't know it just grabs you by the by the throat I think yeah if I could speak to that uh when I first started to work with him on that that promo book, I inked him the way I kind of ink myself, other people sometimes, but you know mostly towards my own style, I guess. And so I was throwing in dry brush and textures and all kinds of stuff, which you do see in his work. But in general, at that time, his his work he was keeping it much, you know, like you say, uh, these really strong strokes and. Uh, all the blacks would meet and not a lot of uh, breaking up of things. So we had to have a talk uh, before I was inking him regularly about that, the stuff to like pull back on and not overdo that kind of stuff. Cause he liked keeping it simple uh, and not adding all those kind of textures that I tended to lean towards. Yeah, if I can just, um, I pulled up some artwork of his I've gotten over the years and there's this great, I don't think you can see it. So you see there's, there we go. Oh, cool. Uh, oh, hey. um, it's a, like a black uh, widow uh, page he did, but I was just looking at it and you can see, you know, where he's taken back out on the, the lip because he didn't like it or what I like um, the street sign. Uh, yeah. Where is it? I'm on the other side. Um, you can tell that's probably referenced somehow, but the way it's drawn, <laughs> it's deliberately not legible, which, you know, that's just a choice. I just think that <laughs> kind of stuff. Yeah, it's it it great. Good. As a because I, I I met him, he was well established by the time I ever met him, and I remember just having very slight conversations with him. I I met him kind of by accident in a in a pub at my first New York Comic Con, and I was just talking to this very nice man, and somebody said, "Oh, you met JP," and he's my favorite artist. So I was like, "You're JP, Leon," uh, <laughs> and of course I turned into a total <laughs> fanboy. But um, I would say in like a ten minute conversation I had with him, I learned more about drawing. Um, not like technique, but what you're trying to the lines you're trying to put on the page than I ever learned in like four years in art college. Um, uh, mm. and I, I, I cherish that conversation. I just, it just, it changed who I was as an artist. And um, uh, yeah, I'm going to stop talking now. <laughs> <laughs> no, what, real quick, I, I, I forgot to show I'm wearing my John Paul shirt yeah, today. Oh, lovely. <laughs> Where are you? There you are. Oh. <laughs> All right, <laughs> very nice. <laughs> so, Jack, I mean, I see a lot of similarities in in your art uh, and and uh, John Pauls and stuff. And you know, yeah, I don't know. As a, as a contemporary, what what did you think of uh, what uh, John Paul was putting out there? That's like the highest praise anyone could give me, uh, John. <laughs> so thanks. Um, it, no, uh, yeah. So, uh, well, I mean, to me, he was just like the best of us. You know, he. he it, all of his sensibilities to me are things that as comic artists you, you should strive for and 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 he had them in spades all the time um i remember um i actually became aware of this stuff kind of i just started on on the losers at vertigo with um, my editor was will dennis and will was editing uh winter men uh, at the time with with brett and, and jp and and um like you know, so so you know, so this I've I've come from obviously the UK, uh, working two thousand eight, and then then I get this kind of this Vertigo job, and it's a, it's a big deal, you know. You, you're you're very uh, aware of where you're at, and you're very self conscious, and you get that kind of DC Vertigo, you know, the first time they send you the boards, and it was a very kind of you know very sort of uh, um, concentrated time in 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 in, uh, in what I was aware of as an artist and, and where I was trying to go, and um. So and I saw JP's work and I remember even Will, my editor, saying to me at the time, like, "Yeah, this guy is like you know a hundred steps ahead of, of of everyone else." And I remember seeing it and and just and just being kind of like, um, I don't, I don't want to say crestfallen because because that's the wrong way of putting it. It was just like, oh my god, this guy is incredible just absolutely incredible the, the, the depth he puts into the, the, the environments the scenery the way he renders it like declan was saying it's also 
it's also smart and it's also precise and it's also deliberate and 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 you know like all all the best art it, you're right john it does have a kind of there's a real world element to it and i think he probably uses reference like i'm like i'm sure some of us do i, I, I certainly do a lot um which gives it that kind of there's a grounded reality to it but also like all the best illustrators there's he elevates it you know the, it's always there's always more to it than that there's always a sort of there's a tone there's a kind of sense behind it that, that as a reader that that that's really what you're getting from it and i remember whitman just thinking well this is you know there's a whole world in there you know it's it's it's, it's an incredibly um uh it's an incredibly difficult thing to do, frankly, as a comic artist, to 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 rent to realize stuff like that so well, so so intrinsically correct, you know, uh, and 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 really for me as an artist, that's 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 the inspiration like that for me. Whenever I saw his work, I was always impressed by it, always inspired by it. Which you know, a lot of really good artists, they, 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 it doesn't always have that element. And for me, his work in, inspires me to be a better artist, frankly. And, and, and isn't that the best thing that, that, that you can do, you know, as, 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 you know, as we walk through this life and we find things that we love and, and isn't that a, a beautiful, lovely thing? And, 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 and that's what he gave us. And that's, um, that's really, uh, I guess why I'm here, you know? Yeah. No, I get it. Absolutely, man. Lee, uh, did you guys, and forgive me, weren't you both in Texas, right? No. Oh, excuse no. me. Tell me. No problem. No problem. You know, uh, uh, yeah. T tell, tell us about your, yeah, your thoughts on John Paul. So uh, I met JP, I guess it was 98, 99. Um, I just started working at Wildstorm Studios. And um, <clears throat> uh, it was like, uh, um, you know, this artistic orgasm the first time I saw it. John Paul. It was just, it was like I had, I had come into the studio being like a um, very influenced by Aaron Weisenfeld and Michael Lopez and some of these other artists who were working at Wildstorm at the time and then seeing John Paul's work um, was kind of like a beacon, you know, uh, and, and um, uh, I, that same year at San Diego Con, he was there and um, he was, he was doing, I think a, uh, Carl Malone comic book. It was entirely done in marker, and um, uh, not many people have seen have have actually seen that stuff. I got photocopies somewhere around here. But, uh, it, what was it again? It was a Carl Malone comic book <laughs> was, uh, publisher. Oh, Carl and Malone, had, the basketball yeah, player, the mailman. He had, he had just done. Um, he had just done challenges the unknown for DC, and uh, and that was really where I discovered his work. Yeah, and so of course I I kind of made a line for him at the convention, and I was like, man, you know, you just your work just kind of changed the way I thought about art. And um, he was just super gracious, and and he had these photocopies of his pencils, and that was the first time I'd seen his work in pencil. And um, we just immediately started kind of talking about the sculptural nature of art that both of us kind of like, and and. Um, uh, I think I was probably, he, he, everybody said this before, he's, he's a soft-spoken, was a soft-spoken man. Um, yeah. But uh, I think I probably overwhelmed him. I was just such a, <laughs> I was just such a fan in that moment. And, and I was young. I mean, I was 19 or 20 years old. And so I, it was just the, this pure joy of what I was seeing in his work. And um, he, he was nice enough to, we exchanged phone numbers and information at that point, you know, back in the days where, you know, Jack, Jack the Ripper was still murdering people. There was, there was no email. There was, there was no, you know, it was, it was, um, it was, it was a phone conversation. So what I started to do, like, like, uh, you know, like a crazy fan who was learning to draw comics at the time is every job I did, I would, um, I would photocopy the pencils and I would send John Paul this packet of, of photocopies and I'd call him up and we would, we would, uh, we would chit chat and, and he would, we would talk about Lucian Freud and even corn and painters. And then he would be kind enough to look at the work and give me his, give me his feedback. Um, he was always very gracious, much more so than, 
that work deserved. Um, but uh, he was very, he said some things to me artistically that definitely uh, I still think about today. I mean, he, he talked about feeling your way around your surfaces and really knowing your surfaces. And he had a way of doing that that worked for him. And, and um, you know, I, I, it was just such a, an interesting artistic conversation to be having and so far removed from um, the only way to describe it, like I said, is just is just I I had never talked art quite like that with somebody before that I uh, worship, you know, whose work I, I really I really admired. So it was kind of my first experience with really what it meant to also be a comic book professional. If that makes any sense. And John was wasn't arrogant. He was very, very uh, extremely humble. He was, um, you know, just the exact kind of uh, artist that I wanted to. I wanted to be. And so, um, yeah, we, we kept in touch for for a few years. And um, I moved to Europe, and and, and things skewed. But. Um, I, I really, I really treasured those those conversations, you know, and and um, I, I don't know if John treasured them as much as I did, <laughs> but, uh, but they were, but you know, it was it was like a Chris Farley show episode. I was like, you remember that time? <laughs> you remember that? You remember that challenge? You do that, you know. <laughs> And he was he was gracious and 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 kind, and I, I actually got a chance to meet Bill. You know, we we talked a few times as well during that during that period in time, and it was uh, it was an education, comic book education. That's amazing, man. That's very very cool, Charlie. Any and thoughts? You, and you were and you well, I said oh. real quick, and you said sure. you were nineteen or twenty, Lee, and he was an old man like in his early twenties. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that incredible? I didn't know. I mean, I, I knew he was young when he when he was doing static, and in fact, um, you know, heard uh actually our producer uh, Chad was telling me that he went to Walt Simonson, who was his teacher at the time when he got the static job, and said, Can I just turn in my pages for static for you to grade and and you know see how I'm doing? Because the deadlines are killing me, and you know, I only got so much time. And Walt's like, absolutely. And even years before that, when he was in high school, he was doing Dungeons and Dragons work. I, I mean, his his samples still are famously the greatest samples ever, ever. Like, like his, he, he, it, like people talk about them like they're mythological texts. I mean, it's just like they're they're that they're those kind of sample pages that I think it was a Superman and Fireman story or something like that. But but it was like one of those things where. Um, yeah, he, it was, you know, he was, he was, uh, he was the real deal. Hmm. He's the with, Superman. With, that with, I, or, oh, that's Green Lantern, with, excuse me. With what uh, Lee's saying there, like, it's a very similar uh, experience I had. I, I, I had a weird thing because, like, I was such a fan of his and I was lucky to talk to him. I, I kind of backed away. I do this weird thing with artists who I really like. Um, uh, I, I don't really talk to them. That's why I talk to Jock all the time. But, um, <laughs> I, uh, uh, I remember talking to him and, um, Again, just a small little piece of information change. How I thought about how I was thinking was um, uh, there's a cover of Winter Men where there's two characters drinking, and one of them he has um, he's drawn he drew all you know draw all the detail and everything, and he drew the trousers on one of the characters fully rendered, and the other one is just the outline, and there's like a dollop of ink on the page, and uh, I you know I mentioned that specific cover, I, I just the thought of somebody mentioning a random cover I did to me would seem so weird. So it must have seemed like such a dope. But um, but I asked him, why did he do that? Why did he not fill in all the detail on the other on the other um, tr uh, trousers? And he told me that he was going to, that he he inked the outline of the of the trousers and, and shoes, and he was going to start rendering it, but there was like too much ink on the brush, and it spilled and got on the page. And first he was going to go, oh no, I, I've, you know, I've got to fix it. But he stopped and he looked at it and realized that it was more interesting that way, and <laughs> I, I swear that just changed everything about how I was how I was inking. You know, instead of trying to make everything perfect and refined, that like, you know, the mark making itself uh, affects how you're drawing it, and it just it just I, I can see a clear change in how I drew before that conversation and after, and it's such 
it's like Lee was saying, like the conversations about art were more informative. I mean, I actually, I, I mean, the reason I bought some of his pages was because I wanted to learn. It's a great way to learn if you're an artist is to really look at original pages. But um, but understanding the thinking behind it is something. I mean, you can't do that in college. Nobody can really teach you that. Excellent. Very very cool. So yeah, gentlemen, uh, Charlie, uh, Mark, any uh, you know, please. Chime um, in. Yeah. Well. Uh, it's hard to believe that you know um, he's passed away and I'm older than he is, and um, yeah. That's you know, how I felt. Are, yeah. I mean, uh, the, and I, I only met him the once, and that was only very briefly at one San Diego, and um, I was buying artwork off him, uh, and I do remember thinking how bloody cheap it was for what it was for starters. I should have bought more pages, to be honest, uh, but. Yeah, I was just, I just think, you know, at my age, I was scrabbling around in the mud in the basement of comic art where he was ascending to the sky, at the, you know, sort of in our, you know, perhaps early 30s or something like that. Um, and I just think there's, there's, there's probably three or four schools of different comic art you could possibly sort of love everybody in. And... One of my favourite school, you know, it's just a personal opinion, is probably the Alex Toth School of Art. And, you know, JP certainly is at the, the highest point of that sort of school, which is, you know, if you can draw a story in one mark, why bother telling it in 20? You know, and that's, that's always been my sort of adage to try and achieve exactly what JP achieved in his artwork, that ability just to draw... Just to tell a story in one beautiful line, you know, and you know, I, I still can't do that, and yet he managed to achieve that. And you say, right, he, he sort of came out, he's one of those rare artists that came out fully formed and just got better from that. And you know, it's just, it's just a bloody tragedy. So, yeah, yeah, it's just, well, it's just amazing, you know. We said at the beginning, yeah, it's a shame to get through, you know, get have this panel on such a solemn occasion. But uh, yeah, we want to make it a celebratory occasion as well. So, you know, let's let's sing his praises to the, to the rooftops. It's just it, the only thing I regret about JP that he 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 was an artist artist, and yeah, almost almost similar to Toth, he was yeah. uh, he was never. He never reached the fan favorite sort of extreme, yeah, sort of level that, that so many, well, yeah, not to name any names, but lesser artists have, have, have reached. And I just think it's a crying shame that's happened to pe people like that, you know, just, just such amazing, amazing talent to, yeah, but hey, this panel is for us to try and convince everybody else what an what? amazing artist he was and go and look at his books and be inspired and let's sell more stuff of that type of artwork. Hmm. Well, I, I think like Toth, uh, you know, decades from now, people will be re-examining the work. Um, and, and that's the thing. So, and I agree, I hear what you're saying, Charlie, but I also think maybe because he was doing so many covers and of course his health obviously was likely messing with, di you know, deadlines and, and the ability to, to do sequ sequential work I well, I think, I think, yeah, I, th I think he would have been a perfect artist for, you know, Bon Desene stuff, you know, because it, 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 it's definitely much more European than, you know, American, UK sort of style artwork. Um, and again, he, he, would have, he would have gone down a storm in France. I don't know if he ever, you know, did anything for, for anybody in France, but um, yeah, he, he would have brilliant for that sort of stuff. I, I, I'm curious to, to ask you guys, um, the artist artist is always the term that's kind of used for somebody who's not really appreciated, but except for artists. Um, and I would have put JP in that, um, in that, ho in that uh, category, but um, I've been like really pleasantly surprised with just how much outpouring of appreciation <coughs> I saw online afterwards. I, I kind of felt like I was one of the only few who really appreciated him, but um, it's been really nice to see just like just just lots of fans, lots of people who just you know read his work that I I uh, I was wrong, you know, and I'm glad I was wrong. I was glad to see that I, that yeah. he was way more appreciated than, than I thought he was. 
Mark, well, you want to talk about the yeah, GoFundMe? I'd love to jump in. Right. Yeah. So, um, um, I guess, first of all, I was very fortunate um, to have a business relationship with John Paul for a long time, since 2004. Uh, and exactly what you all are saying, very soft-spoken, very humble, yeah. always warm, though. You know, I would always go over to him. He'd always have a smile for me when I greeted him. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think what you're saying is, yes, he's an artist artist and the general fan populace might not um, know him like they should. But I think anybody who fully understands the art form of making comics, uh, whether you're an artist or an art collector, um, you're a huge fan because um, he had um, so European uh, customers were were always asking me, you know, is John Paul going to come to France or is he, you know, going to do any shows in Europe? Uh, he has a huge fan base in Europe, uh, um, in addition to the people that get him in the U.S. And I, I think that um, he's appreciated. But um, yes, if you're talking the general person coming in off the stands looking for the, the hot book, uh, maybe they don't know his name, but um, lifelong comic art and comic book collectors, um, they should know him, you know, um, and appreciate him. Um, but uh, I would like to say I feel uh, super fortunate because I have got to look at his pages on a daily basis whenever I want to. And what always struck me was his backgrounds and all the details, yes. uh, sometimes minimal. And sometimes I would look at a chain link fence that he would draw <laughs> and it's mesmerizing, you know, and the buildings that he would draw. Um, I love the way he did it. Um, you know, thin lines, fat lines to, you know, bring your eyes the way he wants you to, to look at them. I mean, uh, I have a page here. I know you guys oh, have please. some graphics. Because I was going to pop up some. Um, go on. There you go. So look at this panel here, right? Yeah. This is all hand drawn. <laughs> wow. It's all hand drawn. Okay. It's it's just a talking heads page, but he he's <laughs> how many pieces of artwork, how many little masterpieces has he made inside <laughs> of just yeah. one, one panel, you know? Wow. And telling their own little stories. Um, mm. So... Uh, and there's my uh, there's my little chain link fence I'm talking about. Which, <laughs> I mean, look at, look at all the patterns within yeah. that. You know, mm. incredible. I mean, some artists choose to go very minimal, um, and I, I wouldn't say he's ever too busy, but he does it for a purpose. I feel like you know, and oh. I love the mach machinery that he does. Yes, I mean, it's just incredible. Which but, but, yeah, we all know. But look also in that, in that in that page, there's all that real amazing detail. Yet if you looked yeah. in that second panel to the top left, those plants, it's just an outline. He's just that is just a really interesting choice of um, you know just basically doing something really simple in t on top of all that complicated you know line work and everything. And that's it. He's a master of negative space he's a master of you know uh dead space all that sort of stuff the, the ability to put something really highly detailed in one corner and it all sort of what what declan was saying about you know the choice of doing you know one set of trousers in you know rendered and and just seeing the folds etc etc and then one is an outline and he does that all the time and you just think yes that is just genius and just to see that beautiful you know just trying to achieve that uh Look, I mean, look at the marks down the side of that character's face. The the on the other side, the, the guy yeah. in the background that, with the guy and the girl. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he doesn't need anything more than that. And there's just that little chick for his cheekbones. You know, <laughs> uh, look, look at the building. Like that is just what you want to aspire to. Just to do it that simply, you go, "Yep, that's it. I'm out of here." But if you look at the buildings, it looks like I think I think you can tell he ruled all the planes. He's ruled all the lines. Uh, crisscross lines with the windows and chose to black them out. You know, yeah, like that's yeah. not 
that's not him skimping. Whereas, like the top panel, he, you know, he drew the there's there's negative space around the character. You know, if it was me, if I was honest, I'd probably black out all the stuff around the all the all that stuff at the other side of the door. You know, but no, no, he he put all that detail in. Like again, he's choosing, he's making decisions, he's drawing, which is always like so exciting to see. And like, and yeah, and like I say, you can tell, especially you know, panels one and four, you can tell obviously he's used photo ref for it. But like you were saying, you know, he's chosen to draw it in a way that is him rather than just, you know, copying something from a photograph or, or whatever. Yeah, he, he informs his drawing with reference. He doesn't draw photographs, which I think is a big... You know, it's it's. When, I remember when I first started using reference. I was draw. I just it, it took me to a point to realize I'm drawing this photo. I'm not like yeah. you know, and a photo isn't a drawing. Whereas I think what JP is so good at doing is everything feels so real because it's so informed by the reference. But I never, I never feel like he's drawing a photograph. No, exactly. Nice. I want to say something about his detail. Um, when he was. Uh... Drawing Earth X would be some incredibly detailed scene sometimes, like a double page or something. And even though there'd be, you know, hundreds of characters and all kinds of machinery or whatever it might be, he uh, would simplify all the elements within it. So you might have, you know, 50 small characters, but each character is just made up of maybe just a few shadows. You know, as opposed to a lot of outline and a lot of, you know, uh, uh, detail like that. So he could he could take uh, uh, many elements that are all simplified, overlay them on top of each other, and it would still come across as extremely detailed, but simplified at the same time. Because yeah. yeah. it's obviously uh, easy to over-render anything, so. Yeah. There's something in this art, and I mean this in the nicest way. It's it's off-putting, like it's in minor key. Like like when you say that he's in the Toth school. Like I think people who come traditional to comics are like, okay, John Buscema to Jim Lee. Like that's what we expect to see when we kind of open a comic book. And he drew in in this style that was kind of um, it made you feel uncomfortable a little bit when you looked at it. Like there's something well, in he, it. He, he also oh, got a, he. Got, uh, real quick, I say he also early in his career got super excited about uh, Jorge Safino. He had a big influence oh. him at one time. So, yeah. I, think, I think I think that's a brilliant, I think that's a brilliant anal a musical analogy, Lee. Because my, all my favorite songs and music all tend to be in a minor key, <laughs> and uh, you know, some yeah, like you say, you reference certain artists there who just you know who draw. And this is no criticism. This is just, you know, how some people draw. Some people draw in a major key, you know, and they tend to be like all great pop songs, for instance. All the big pop, most big popular songs tend to be in a major key. So it is a minor key, is a more selective, more, more, I don't know, more, I won't say, I don't know, it's hard to describe, but a more uh, unique way of, 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 of getting into something, definitely. I'm Mark, it's great that you're doing this. That you're showing us I'm the gonna have, yeah. So I'm going I'm to have a competition with Mark because I've got a lot of stuff. I know he'll win because he'll have more art. But um, I have this. Um, oh, another, please! I think a black book with a splash page. Um, and I like. I love here. Sorry, because I, I got it framed. Um, I love this character here, but like look at the these guys. I love it's just the outline of the drawing. He didn't. <laughs> yeah. It's just again, just and and then here, this guy, he's got a kind of a pencil tone going through it. Which I don't know how how that well that's scanned in the vinyl, but um, just I just I mean this I just love, I look at the helicopter too like it's <laughs> deliberately what he hasn't drawn is as important as what he is, as he has drawn. Sure, uh, I love when he broke into all that open line drawing uh, later on. Uh, I thought that really added a lot to his work. <laughs> More stuff. <laughs> that's great, man. What page is that from, Mark? This is um, Further Adventures of uh, Cyclops and Phoenix. Oh, cool. Yeah, beautiful. Unbelievable. Yeah. Look at this. Look at this down here, you know, and the little carriage in the background here. Yeah. yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Oh. Yep. Too much, guys. That's that's amazing. And also, you know, we're running at the bottom uh, the, the page, the GoFundMe page. 
for John Paul. And, um, you know, it's also, it's going to be running on the other panels this weekend, but I wanted to point out guys that, uh, you know, you, every, uh, we've got great pieces of art that was donated that were donated by, uh, members of the group and, uh, other artists as well. And, uh, they're all uh, represented in this commercial that we're running on, uh, in between the panels. But, uh, yeah, Mark, I've got, I've got Actually, some of the images up. So yeah, if you don't mind great, describing great. them. So uh, we've actually sold uh, Jock's Wolverine Max cover, hey, um, right. which there it is. is right here. So this is sold, uh, which is fantastic. Uh, mm. It's all going towards uh, the um, GoFundMe, um, you know, for the family. Uh, we also have uh, a Charlie Allard, Stefano uh, Gariano, uh, Walking Dead piece available. Yep, right here. Boom. Yep. So. That's beautiful. Uh, Absolutely. Zinks, Charlie Spencils. You got a great Negan Didn't shot. Didn't do the whole so link a, fence there, song. Charlie, no? <laughs> <laughs> what was that? No chain link fence. You didn't, looks like you didn't draw in the rest of it. <laughs> I'm doing bloody 22 pages a week. <laughs> great. He's not exaggerating there either. <laughs> 22 a week. Charlie's a madman. <laughs> he was a bloody chain link fence for crying out loud. <laughs> uh, Deck is uh, donating this beautiful Hellblazer uh, oh, piece. Wow. Oh, wow. Right. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, where's well, the wallpaper deck? Come on, make it good. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bloody cover. Uh, I, 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 I like it. I like that uh, I, I I donated something at JP to these amazing Hellblazer covers uh, they wrapped up like last year or, or this year yeah I think, and uh, yeah I chose yeah uh, I'm, I'm going to show you what I what I can't do by uh, providing that one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm not part of the the group of the fundraising there with the with the art, but I I on my uh, comic art fans page uh, I put up this one. Uh, on there. To there donate go, uh, to the fundraiser. This is from my Van Helsing uh, versus Jack the Ripper book I did. It was a French book, huh. and oh, wow. Um, so. uh, wow, very nice. That's great, Bill. Yeah, so I got that up. I'll probably put a couple other things up too. Right, and that's at Bill's uh, comic art fans uh, page. And then also Dex is at the Cadence booth that Comic Art Fans uh, is uh, represented by. So I just wanted to uh, get that info out. And also, folks, you know, oh. uh, when, when Tommy Lee Edwards and uh, uh, Bernard Chang uh, set up that GoFundMe page, it's there for a memorial fund. And certainly, we I mean, sadly, as adults, we all know that when someone passes, there are estate costs and everything and getting, you know, everything transferred over uh, to – the, the survivors, but also uh, I know he has at least one child that's, you know, uh, prepping right. for college. 17 year old daughter. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, that's, that's terrific. And we all know how expensive college is these days. So uh, any, anything you can donate beyond purchasing the art, that's why we're rolling the GoFundMe uh, URL uh, at the bottom there. And uh, your, your help would really uh, mean a lot because again, these, this is a guy that uh, uh, God, mm -hmm. it's only been a year or so since we lost Darwin Cook. And so many of the, of the great talents that we've lost recently, John Paul stuff is going to be out there for decades. And, and it really is giving us a lifetime of enjoyment with the art he produced in his short life. And the least we can do is say thank you by uh, making sure that his daughter is going to be OK. Yeah, there's uh, several pieces that are available in the splash page booth uh, on the you know Comic Art Live, uh, Comic Art Fans uh, website. And there's different price levels, so not everything is going to be at the cover level. There's uh, there's a signed print by Darwin Cook uh, that um, I had that I I put up for sale. Um, I, there's also a, an original by um, let's see, I believe I put a Lee Neil Yu a Wolverine. Okay, oh, this is uh, this is a Joker um, uh, bust illustration by one of my Argentinian artists, uh, Francisco Peranzini. And he didn't know John Paul at all, but he appreciate uh, appreciated him just like you all. And so he never had contact with him or anything, but he wanted to contribute because uh, he's such a big fan of John Paul's artwork. Uh, so uh, that is available as well. Uh, there's the uh, Lino U piece that um, that I put in as well. Beautiful. Uh, so there's there's a handful of different uh, pieces. Um, you know, I love this one too, man. This so, 
Right. So, yeah. John Paul um, was referred to me from Cliff. I used to work with Cliff uh, for oh, years, wow. and uh, Cliff and John Paul are friends. And so, um, I had that piece. I did an art book um, in 2007 where each artist that wanted to participate uh, contributed uh, three illustrations that they drew for the book. Uh, this is a print of one of the illustrations that Cliff did. And we did a handful of uh, prints that where he did uh, remark drawings, original drawings on them. So there's a uh, original uh, Cliff Chang illustration of uh, Green Arrow down at the bottom. Uh, and uh, John Paul did uh, three illustrations for that book. And um, one of them was a shadow illustration. And one of you guys owns it. One of my artists owns it. I can't remember who that is, but it was... So me. Fantastic. I had several, several of my guys want to buy it after the fact because it's, it's mind blowing, you know, uh, the details, fantastic. The way he, he did the foreground. I, I have copies still laying around. I should have had one available, uh, but uh, he did um, uh, three totally different uh, pieces, but they're all of course uh, amazing. Uh, but the shadow piece uh, stands out and uh, I had gotten asked by several of my guys that, um, you know, uh, wanted it at the time. So, um, yeah, it, and that's that's so cool is um, how big of fans that you guys are of each other, you know. Um, I know Ooh. that uh, I, I have a, a great piece <laughs> that Charlie did uh, for me because uh, Duncan Fregredo, um did a piece um, in the art book and Charlie wanted it, so um i basically traded traded that to him uh and got the commission from um from charlie so um yeah it's it's great that we can sit here and talk about uh john paul and appreciate uh what he did um if you haven't um seen read the winterman you should read the winterman i know that it at least the, as of the last time I talked to him before, that's probably the project that he was most um, proud of. Uh, yeah, proud of. Uh, uh, and probably. obviously he's proud of all of his, his kids, sure. but I know, um, um, yeah, I, I know we had been asked a million times for originals from the Winterman and um, he never wanted to part with them because of, you know, how attached he was oh, to yeah. them. Was that his only creator-owned? Uh, sorry, guys. Was that his only creator-owned uh, thing over I the years, so. Mark? I, I, think, I, think, I think it is. I think he pretty think much was so. DC. Yeah, I think it's the only. I believe yeah. even Winterman was 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 DC any, uh, too. So I think that's the closest. I I the last time I saw him, I was I was trying to talk him into doing a creator, not not with me or anything, but just in general that it would be like how how. For somebody who owned, who was so involved in his work, I felt like that it's something that he should totally do. But um, but I, I didn't know he was ill or anything like that, you know. So, sure. Uh, I had the same problem trying to get him on Word Balloon. I'd have great, you know, uh, table conversations with him in Artist Alley and stuff. And uh, you know, he'd just, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm really busy right now. And I'm like, okay, no problem. You know, the sweetheart of a guy, though, unbelievable. Well, and like to to what the guys are saying earlier, he was also so like soft spoken and reserved. And I talked, I talked to him about a month just over a month ago because he did a cover for um an image book that i just that just came out of mine and um i mean I, i'll be honest like i'm very i was very uncomfortable with it going it had already gone to print after he died but um it's just putting out a book and promoting a book with you know a cover by your favorite artist who just died was really really strange i don't know how tom feels like you know with the cat because he, he yeah, you said he hadn't finished the Catwoman book is yeah, he, finished about, he, he finished about a third of it. He's yeah. I mean, it's a it's a thirty eight page book. You think about thir thirteen pages, right? Mm -hmm. um, so uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's super. And that um, and the pages are beautiful. And he laid out the whole thing. It's all laid out. So we we're I don't know. We, the, they have plans. We're probably not supposed to talk about them. But we have the the whole thing is it has JP's layouts that we have forever of all thirty eight pages. And he just finished thinking thirteen or so. Um, and it's 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 a yeah it's a book that's about life and death so it really makes me uh, it chokes me up to think about it. Wow. Uh, yeah. Uh, but 
a funnier JP story on a lighter side. I was thinking, I was remembering um, uh, one of the few f fights I ever saw him got in with an editor uh, for, for, for Sheriff of Babylon, I think it was two. You know, usually an artist, when they do a cover, he's the cover artist. They turn in three covers and the, and or so, and, and the editor picks one. He turned in three covers. The editor's like, I love two of these so much. Just make the other one the cover for issue three. And he's, and he's like, no, 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 that's the cover for issue two. And he's like, no, 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 it's fine. You'll get two out of the three options. And he's like, no, 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 I can't do it. He, he, he's like, I have to turn in three different options for you for the next issue. He refused to just do the one option. So he, even though the, the, the editor had already chosen the next cover, he turned in options that he knew were going to get rejected. Because it was just like, that's my job is to turn in options. Wow. He was, <laughs> like, I can see why he was, he was so dedicated to his craft. He just he wanted to get the best of the best. Um, that covers and that, that cover for three is beautiful. It's just two women doing each other's hair. That's great. I think uh, I think I, I saw Tommy Tommy Lee some, say something uh, along those lines that um, just how much he you know he wanted to do. I, I'm I'm not I'm not quoting him or anything, but it was along the lines of like you know he did to do good work and he cared about the work that he did, and I, I think that shows you know it shows so much in everything he produced. Be a cover like like and he's he's one of those guys amazing. Um, storytelling work with his covers are, are there's cover art and there's sequential art and they're two yes. different beasts and he was so good at both of them yeah yeah, yeah. yeah he's, uh, he's, yeah, he's, his, his design sense was super good which is something something that i, I really love about uh yeah the best comic art um uh, um yeah but someone mentioned the uh, zafino um uh, similarity earlier and even though i think you know it, he, he wasn't a kind of reflection of Zafino. I think, you know, he, he was way beyond that and he was his own voice, but the, there is something in, in, in the, um, like his lines were just sort of kind of beautiful, right? You know, yeah. everything he did was just sort of beautiful. And, and, and that's something that, that is very hard to do. And, 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 um, and, and, and it's kind of, I, for me, I think that's, that's the work that, that, that stays with people and, and stays, you know, you sort of, it kind of has a bit of an imprint on you somehow, you know, um, and he, he was always doing that. He, he was, you know, he, people have talked about the detail and the background and stuff like that. And it's like, yeah, he, he did do that. But along with like the, the trousers, the Declan set or, 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 the, or the pure white background behind the figure, um, there was always a super strong design sense and, um, you know, you know that's uh, that, that that's not an easy thing to kind of configure. You know, to get all, all those elements, something that's so well drawn, so well thought out. You know, uh, but also so kind of striking and kind of you know um, smart. Frankly, um, you know, uh, um, uh, yeah, uh, nothing. Yeah, I, 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 I think I, I, there's, there's a weird, there's a weird contrast with his work in that. Um, you know, you were saying like how the mark making with the reference, but also like Jocko was saying, like there's so many lines that are incredibly elegant, you yeah. know, that will just go through an image. And then there's this big chunk of block, black or white or something. So it's it's like there's these two different elements kind of butting up against each other that like create sparks, I guess, you know. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's like, yeah, it's like, you know, we're talking about you know music earlier it's like it's like the best kind of music is it is it's it's all there you know you can you can kind of like for me i feel like jp's the sort of artist where you can you can trust him you know and and i mean that like in the best possible way like you can you can look into his work as far as as you as you can and he'll still reward you you know you know a lot of artists kind of let you let you down you know uh, um <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Does that make sense? You know, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Right? You know, it, well, it, it's good if it's good if somebody's uh, it's good if somebody's even their rushed work looks great. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I I can give a good example of that uh, with John uh, when we were doing Earth X. It would be hard deadlines with that as opposed to nowadays where people would get a little more room for a a, a limited series or something, or or a, you know a chapter of something, and. Um, there were uh, a number of times where the deadline was so hard for a few pages. Usually he would do this on the double page early in the book. And he would say, you know, I don't have time to pencil it. <clears throat> so I'm just going to ink it myself. You know, so in other words, he was pretty much going uh, pretty close straight to ink from a layout. And well, that, those that's pages the, were not this one, but those pages were extremely simple uh, with uh, because he was using so many silhouettes then, 
uh, and uh, and and some and going into some of that open line work too. But it was always amazing what he did with with so little in uh, yeah. in a short period of time. That's amazing, guys. We got to wrap up. Um, final, final, Lee. I feel like you haven't you haven't said anything in a while. Any final thoughts? And I don't mean to put you on the spot, yeah. but any anybody you know uh, with like the minute or so left, I want to remind everyone again the great pieces that uh, everyone has donated uh, to uh, go to. Uh, in the case of uh, these, are at uh, the uh, Splash Page Comic Art uh, booth for the yeah. week. So let me chime in real fast. Uh, I check my phone. Uh, while you're showing other pieces. And right now we have requests for four of the pieces uh, that we talked about that. Um, so as soon as we're done here, I will contact those people back and uh, I think we'll have sales to go towards that as well. So there might be, nice. Yes. Brilliant. And, and Dex piece is at uh, the Cadence booth. So remind everyone that Bill show uh, your uh, piece one more time. That's at your, uh, at your gallery. Stand by. Here we go. Boom. Yeah. There it is. That's outstanding, Beautiful. and uh, truly, guys. And Char you know, Charlie's got his Walking Dead uh, pages, and uh, you know that's awesome. So, congratulations, guys! Seriously, wonderful conversation. Uh, a great loss, but a man that clearly yeah. has uh, made his mark on the industry okay. will not be forgotten, and that's the least I can say about it. Yeah, I, I can say as well. I've talked to some younger artists who are aware. Like I, like I said, I thought I was one of the the generation who last generation would really appreciate him. There's people much younger than me now who are totally know his, and love his work. So I think that's that speaks to like the legacy of, of how he's going to be remembered. I I, I hope. Agreed, guys. Agreed. Thank you, great great conversation, gentlemen. Uh, I really appreciate it. And uh, for everyone watching, stick around in the next hour. I'm going to have a one on one with uh, Mike Perkins. I'm talking about a lot of the great work that he's been doing the last uh, few years in particular. But Mike's moving back to Shrewsbury where I live. No kidding. Yep. Wow, we're going to lose him. He's been in the States for so long. Yes, he's coming back, coming back home. Well, he's kind of with <laughs> it's us. coming home. What am I saying? <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, thanks again. And uh, everyone, thank you truly for watching. And uh, yeah, join the conversation with uh, Mike and myself coming up. Thank you very much. See you, everybody. Thank, thank you. you. This is great. Nice to see you, everybody. Take Bye. care, all. Bye-bye.